Amen. Good morning, everybody. Amen. We're going to ask you to stand up. I know we'll have some more folks trickle in here as we get to singing. Uh, but, but again, I said this last week, and it's still on my heart this week, just from that song, uh, when it talks about going to the house of the Lord. I, the Bible says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. And I hope you're glad this morning to actually get to come together in fellowship and worship with uh, fellow believers and with neighbors and with friends. And uh, man, if you can't worship with family, where can you worship, right? So I, I just want to encourage you today, challenge you today, just let go of everything. I don't know what your week has been like. Maybe you've had a blessed week. Maybe you've had a challenging week. Whatever it is, just let it go. This is a brand new week. And let's set this morning aside to worship the one true God, to allow Jesus to be Lord of our life one more time, and just to step into his kingdom glory. Amen. Let's just, let's all pray before we get into worship. Father, I love you and I thank you. We just appreciate you so much, Lord. Thank you for this opportunity we have to glorify you, to lift you up. Father, I speak freedom in this house this morning. Lord, I speak healing into this house this morning. I speak revelation knowledge into this house this morning. Uh, I speak an anointing on the praise team just to usher us into your presence that we can come boldly before the throne of grace to make our petitions known. And Lord, we glorify you and we magnify you. We make you bigger than every situation, every circumstance of our life. And we just decree that you are Lord, that every knee has to bow, every tongue has to confess your lordship, your sovereignty, and your reign. And we praise you in Jesus' name. Everyone say amen. amen. Can we give them a hand clap of praise and let's just get into worship together. breaks the power who breaks the power of sin and darkness whose love is mighty and so much stronger the king of glory the king above all kings who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder who leaves us breath in awe and wonder the king of glory the king above all kings this is amazing grace this is unfailing love that you would take my place that you would bear my cross chaos back into order who makes the orphan a son and daughter the king of glory the king above all kings miss it shines like the sun in all of his brilliance the king of glory the king above all kings Oh, this is amazing grace This is unfailing love That you would take my place That you would bear my cross You would lay down your life Then I would be saved I sing for 
Amazing grace. Love is like a sunrise, shatter in the dark of night. Your presence is a paradise to our hearts. You're filling all the world with light. You're making every wrong thing right. You're waking up the dead to life with your
song today it's called if I could have anything uh, and the premise is if I could have anything Lord make me an offering if I, if I have everything in the world you know Dave's talking on this this series of prosperity Lord if I have any everything in the world father I want to give it all back to you father make me an offering consecrate me set me apart I want to be like these people that we read in the Bible, that even through the trials and the ups and downs and the mess ups, as life gets messy, we all know it, it does and life gets hard, but there's something good in the midst of it, uh, and that's the Lord. And we have an opportunity to step into that every single day in every single moment. So, Father, help me to be an offering. Help me lay down my life and give it back to you. Thank you, Lord.
have it all and have my life. I give it all to you, Jesus, and offer me. Let me be. Father, we want to be an offering. We want to give ourselves, lay down our lives to you, Jesus. God, I only ask that you would make us holy and acceptable. To be laid on the altar of praise. To give you all the glory. To give you all the honor. God, that as we lay down our lives, it would be a worthy offering. That it would be pleasing to you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You're so kind, you're so great, you're so gentle. You're loving, you're faithful. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. Well, that was good. On that note, children, you guys are dismissed. If uh, parents, if you, if you brought your kids and, then, and they need to be signed up, they can do that right out here. Uh, youth, you guys are dismissed to download and then Big kids, adults, uh, you guys are free to hug a neck, mingle, get up, refill your coffees. This is the mingle time. It's kind of shifted a little bit. Amen. Amen. Got the video. Before we get into the word, I want to direct your attention to the screens real quick. We got a real quick video to show you guys. We're so glad to have you here today. If you came prepared to give, there are three ways you can do so. You can give on our website, either over your phone or computer. Simply visit gatheringviridian.org slash give. Over your phone, you also have the option to text to give. All you do is text the amount to 817-826-9229. The first time you do this, it will ask you to set up your account. 
Lastly, you can give in person. On Sundays, we have an offering box in which we accept cash or checks. Please make any checks payable to Gathering Church Viridian. We hope you have a great day. Amen. Thank you guys for being patient with us. We're kind of uh, rearranging some of the, the order of service, uh, at least for the summer months. Uh, the children are going to be uh, joining us uh, uh, for praise and worship uh, while the weather's good. And, uh, and, and that's good. That's good that, that our kids get a chance to be in here, be a part of our praise and worship, be in the atmosphere of praise and worship, because we're the ones who set the example for them, right, to teach them how to worship. Uh, the, the, uh, uh, we, you know, we don't need to just leave it to the, the children's pastor or the, the youth pastors to teach our kids about the word and teach our kids about worship. We, we need to be setting the example as parents, grandparents, and uncles, and neighbors and friends, all that good stuff. So, uh, so, so, uh, like I said, we're, we're going to be kind of shifting a little bit. We've got announcements, but they're going to be at the tail end of the service. So nobody run off, uh, after the sermon directly, we'll have some short announcements afterwards. And, uh, we're, we're also obviously trying to alleviate whoever is doing the announcements. We constantly talk about the three ways to, to give. <laughs> so we, we've got the video, uh, that, that we're, Trying to find the right place to plug it in just to remind everyone, hey, this is the, there are three ways you have three options to give. So uh, just kind of bear with us as we, we kind of get creative. That's the one fun thing about being a nice, tight family like this is, uh, you know, nothing's written in stone. You can just kind of flex and do what you need to do. Uh, we want to welcome a lot of you guys back. We've had some folks out of the country. Uh, let's see, uh, Erica Bartholomew's back from Costa Rica. Uh, Ryan's back from Germany. Uh, uh, we've got... We got some folks. Uh, let's let's see. Uh, the Uribs are back from uh, Canada, right? You guys were in Canada, uh, so so we got some folks who have come back. We got some folks who have dispersed. We got folks in Kansas now. We got folks in California this week. Uh, uh, I think we got some folks traveling back from Italy. So you know, it's summertime, and uh, man, people people get tired of getting uh, being marooned all winter. So now that the weather's good, kids are out of school. Boo! You know, everyone's traveling. That's a good thing. Uh, if the Lord opens up that opportunity for you to get out of town and spend some time with loved ones, do it. Do it. Take advantage of it and, and be safe. Be safe. Um, speaking of Erica Bartholomew, we want to congratulate her. Last week was our graduation and promotion Sunday where we celebrated any of our graduates and also the kids that were being promoted from gathering kids up to GCV youth. Uh, and Erica was actually in Costa Rica on a mission trip. And so, uh, but we want to congratulate her. She graduated a four year bachelor degree in animation and <laughs> animation and visual effects uh, from the, uh, amen, from the Los Angeles Film School, correct? And so, in order to honor her, I'm going to ask her to come on down. Let's give it up one more time. And she did all that while working a full time job. Right here in Texas. Congratulations. <laughs> she worked a full-time job and uh, volunteered a bunch for us and still got her four-year degree. So see, Amen. it can be done. If you want it, it can be done, man. Uh, that's prosperity. That's prospering in all things. I mean, that's what we're, that is uh, what we've been learning about these, uh, these last few, last few weeks. You guys bear with me. My tablet is, uh, Acting a fool today. I can hear you, my love, all the way up here. I want y'all to know, my wife, I, while I'm preaching, she sits up here and heckles me. As if I can't, she's like five feet away from me. I can hear her. So, all right, fine, we're going to do it this way then. Uh, bear with me for one moment. you got to love technology. She says she tries to keep me humble. Trust me, she's doing a good job of it. Trust me. <laughs> hey, we're talking about kingdom prosperity still. Amen. Kingdom prosperity. Uh, we are wrapping up kind of really the foundation of this particular teaching this week. Next week, we're going to have a VBS blast off service, right? We're celebrating our week of VBS. 
And so, so uh, next week we're going to have kind of a VBS takeover. So, so when you when you show up, just get get ready to be a big kid. Isn't that fun? That that we can show up, we can be a big kid, and we get to celebrate with our children's group uh, uh, for VBS. Uh, so, so after that, we kick into uh, more teaching on the kingdom prosperity message, but but we get to go in a, a slightly different direction. This this has all been foundation for uh, the last several weeks. So let's just kind of review real quick. When I say prosperity, I'm not talking about dollars and money, okay? Prosperity doesn't necessarily have anything to do with the U.S. Do dollar or any other form of currency. It, it can involve it, uh, but you, like, like the example we've been saying for weeks now is pizza is not pepperoni. Pepperoni can be a part of pizza, but, but there's lots of other things that can go into pizza to make it wonderful as well. Same thing with money. Money is not prosperity. It can be part of prosperity, but there's a whole lot more to prospering than just money. Some of the most prosperous people you can meet on the planet don't have hardly any, any currency at all, yet they prosper and they flourish. They flourish and they succeed. And, and that's what God calls you to in his kingdom is the ability to flourish and to succeed. You can flourish in your relationships. You can flourish and succeed with peace. You can have all the money in the world and not have any peace. You can flourish and succeed with joy. That's a third of the kingdom of God right there. The Bible says the kingdom of heaven is uh, uh, righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. So righteousness, you can flourish and succeed in righteousness, rightedness, doing the right things. Uh, the, all these things, you can flourish in wisdom. We're going to talk about that a little bit today. You can flourish in wisdom. So, so that's prosperity. That's the definition of prosperity. Uh, can you flourish financially? Absolutely. That can be part of it. But, but it's only a sliver of it. There's, there's so much more to prosperity than that. Uh, rich. So when we talk about being rich, it's not necessarily talking about you're going to have a huge bank account. Praise God if you do. Uh, God's put you in a position to, to, to be an incredible giver within the kingdom of God. Rich means abundant, plentiful. So if you say, hey, River, River Legacy Trails is rich in wildlife, we're not saying that the bobcats out there are like making it rain, right? <laughs> They're not like, you know, they don't have bling on. Uh, it just means that there's uh, plentiful and, and abundant, okay? So you can be rich in love. You can be rich in uh, giving, rich in friendship, rich in uh, uh, marital bliss, Woo, wouldn't that be something? Amen? Hey, I'm all about that, right? God's called us to holy matrimony. Uh, kingdom prosperity. So, so when I talk about kingdom prosperity, this is the definition. And again, this, these are points that we've been hammering uh, for the last, this will be four weeks now. Kingdom prosperity is this. It's not, hey, send me $1,000 and God's going to bless you. Or send me $100, God's going to heal you. It has nothing to do with any of that. Kingdom prosperity is the ability to use God's power, which you are full of, because you're full of the Holy Spirit, right? And you have his word. So the ability to use that power that you've been endued with to meet the needs of mankind in every facet of life. So whatever need crops up today, you have the ability to overcome that need, to function fine in that need because of God's power in you. Say, so, well, does it have to do with money? If the need is money, he will provide it. If the need is peace, he will provide it. If the need is joy, he will provide it. If the need is being able to navigate a relationship between you and someone else, he'll provide the path. He'll show you the path. That's prosperity. Prosperity, really, we sung about it in that last song, that brand new song that, that Ryan's teaching us. If I could have anything, it'd be you. That's prosperity. That's eternal life. Jesus said this, eternal life. Eternal life is not the sweet by and by and you're floating around with angel wings playing a harp on a cloud. That's not eternal life. Eternal life, the Bible says, this is life eternal to know God, the Father, and to know Christ, Jesus Christ, his son whom he sent. That word know is an intimate word biblically. Adam knew Eve, and they bore a son. So it, it talks about intimacy, to, to have intimacy with God. That's prosperity. 
Because if, because if you step in and submit to God, you've got everything. Is there any lack in God? No, he lacks nothing. So that means that you lack nothing. If you live in a big house, small house. If you live in a tent, it doesn't matter. If you have intimacy with God, some of the most prosperous people actually are folks that are in jail cells right now. Because they've actually, there are men and women all over this nation who are incarcerated, who have made true commitments to the Lord and submitted to him. And while they're having to serve out time and serve out uh, time for their crime, they're actually sitting in prosperous peace and more at peace than some of us who are living out here in the free world. That's prosperity. Amen. Amen. So real quick, uh, is this the right sermon, Sobe? Did you guys get pulled up? The right graphics? This looks like it may be last week's. That's all right. All right. I'll, hey, I, I can talk all day long. <laughs> all right. So real quick, real quick, we'll, we'll, do, a, we'll do a review. I've got a graphic that uh, will pop up here shortly. Uh, so if you'll remember, uh, just, just to kind of review everything real quick, we've got... Uh, we have uh, uh, the blessing. We, we talked about, first of all, God wants us to prosper. That's his desire. That's his will is for you to prosper. Next, we talked about living in the fullness of the blessing, the blessing, not just, oh, God has a blessing for you. No, he has the blessing for you. And the, the blessing, to understand it, you've got to go all the way back to Genesis chapter 1, verse 28. You remember what the blessing is. Those of you who are here the, the last several weeks, the blessing that he is, allows us to walk in, it's the very first thing he uttered to humanity. The very first thing that he uttered to, uh, to, to humans was this, to Adam and Eve. is in Genesis 1, chapter 28. He, it says, he spoke a blessing, and the blessing was this, be fruitful, multiply, be fruitful, multiply. And there, then there's three, there's, there's three things for the earth. And those three things are this. Replenish. Subdue. Have dominion. Right? So, so be fruitful. That's, that's, a, that's a good old biblical way of saying prosper. Think about that. The very first thing... The very first thing that God spoke to Adam and Eve was this. Prosper. Be fruitful. And yet somewhere along the line, we've gotten this, you know, Christianity by and large. Yes, that's it right there. Ah, there we go. Hey, give it up for our wonderful tech crew. Give it up for my beautiful daughter who's running <laughs> graphics over there. <laughs> She's like, ah, I'm always having to deal with dad. So here we are. Here's the blessing. Be fruitful, multiply, replenish, subdue, have dominion. The very first thing God spoke to humanity was this. Be fruitful. Prosper. Somewhere along the line, we, we got this concept that in order to follow Christ, you've got to take a, a vow of, of uh, poverty and whatnot. No, there's not. We're, we're going to talk about that. It doesn't, doesn't mean that everyone's going to be multimillionaires. doesn't mean that you're going to have Rolls Royces and Maseratis and all that stuff. Hey, if, if you can afford all that, praise God, whatever. I mean, people spend the money however they want. But, but there are incredible uh, uh, financial principles in the Bible that we'll, we'll get to in a few weeks. But, but this was the, the blessing, right? The blessing. Uh, we know the story. Adam and Eve fell. They, they, they brought the curse on them. So God chose Abram. If you remember, we talked about this last week and made a covenant or a contract to establish the blessing. Everything about the covenant that God made to Abraham had to do with the blessing. And we found that in Genesis 12, Genesis 15, Genesis 17. Okay. Everyone remember that last week? We did a lot of reading and you guys hung with me. I was proud of you. Now in the New Testament, there's multiple uh, locations that that teach us that we are grafted into that contract because of our faith in Christ. Here are two of them. Romans 11, 17 and 18, Galatians 3, 14, okay? Now, I put that up there just for a quick review. Uh, so if you want to take a picture of that or, or whatnot, uh, uh, I can even uh, export this 
and stick it out in Slack for this week when, when I put my notes out there. But, but so we have a, the blessing and then God established a contract or a covenant to reflect the blessing, right? So because he has established that contract, now we are to establish our hearts. So that's what we're talking about today. We're talking about the established contract, established hearts, because he has established his contract, with, which is his word. It's the, the old covenant and the new covenant, or the Old Testament and the New Testament, because he has established his contract with us in the word. And that contract says, if you remember, in, in a nutshell, if you will submit to me, if you'll, if you'll have faith and trust me and obey me, do what I tell you to do, I will take care of everything. You will operate in the blessing, right? And, and just to hammer it one more time, what's the blessing? Be fruitful, multiply, replenish, subdue, have dominion. Man, that's some, that's some good stuff to walk in. Every, situ, every situation you walk in, you can be fruitful in that situation. You can multiply his love, his kingdom, his anointing. You can replenish barren areas of your life and others' lives. You can subdue things. Woo, I need to subdue some things in my life, some mindsets, some attitudes with the word of God. And then you can have dominion. God gives you dominion over your little kingdom which is your life, right? You can have dominion through his authority, through his power, right? All right, so here we go. We're going to talk about the established heart real quick. Everyone say established heart. Established heart. I want to show you when you establish your heart on his word, on his covenant, on his contract. He's established that contract. Now we establish our heart on that contract. Why do we need to establish our heart and not our mind? Because your heart is where you believe. The Bible says to believe in our hearts and confess with our mouth, right? So, so your mind is just for processing. Your heart is for experiencing and, and, and believing and building up of faith. So if you can establish your heart, your mind's going to follow, right? So let, let's see what happens to someone when they establish their heart on his contract, on his covenant. Psalm 112, verses 1 through 8. Everyone still with me? Yep. All right, here we go. Praise the Lord. Blessed is the man who fears the Lord. Do you realize we, only have to, we don't have to fear the devil? You don't have to fear the news. You don't have to fear anything going on. You don't have to fear another human being. You're only required to fear one, and that's God himself. And by that, it's not sheer terror. It's, it's likened to... Hey, we all love fire, don't we? Woo, fire cooks our meals, it warms our houses, but we have to respect fire, right? Hey, we all love our cars. They're powerful machines. They get us from point A to point B, but we respect them, right? You don't want to be careless with it. Same thing with God. We're talking about the power that created the entire universe. That's a powerful being, a powerful deity. And, and so that's, if, if you're going to have awe and respect, it's, that's, that's who it's for. So, blessed is the man who fears the Lord, who delights greatly in his commands. Whose commands? God's commands. So, blessed is the man who fears God, has reverence for God, and, and also delights in doing what God says. Right? That's, that's a repeated pattern that we keep learning about for this contract. His descendants will be mighty on the earth. Here, we're talking about multiplication again, right? So, we got fruitfulness because he's blessed. They, we got descendants. That's multiplication, right? And they're going to be mighty on, on the earth. Wouldn't you love your kids to be mighty on the earth? We're talking about establishing your heart. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches will be in his house. Wait a minute. I thought we were supposed to take a vow of poverty when we follow Christ. It says when you establish your heart, Wealth and riches are going to be in your house. And his righteousness endures forever. And to the upright, there arises light and the darkness. So man, when you walk, live in the way you're supposed to live, you'll have light and the darkness. He is gracious and full of compassion and righteous. A good man deals graciously and lends. Wouldn't that be incredible? To be so blessed in life, you don't have to borrow, but you are actually the one who lends? 
That's what it's talking about here. He will guide his affairs with discretion. Man, you're going to have so much wisdom that you're going to be able to guide your affairs with great discretion. You're going to be able to make some smart decisions. The righteous will be in everlasting remembrance. In other words, hey, you're, you're going to be in the front of God's mind when you do what he tells you to do. He's going to be thinking about you all the time. He will not be afraid of evil tidings. I, love, I highlighted that because, in other words, you're not going to freak out when you hear bad news. It doesn't matter what cable news tries to tell you. It doesn't matter what the internet tries to tell you. It doesn't matter what the phone call tries to tell you. It doesn't matter what the text message tries to tell you. You're not going to freak out over it. Why? Because your heart is, is, is uh, established. He will not be afraid over evil, of evil tidings. His heart is steadfast, trusting in the Lord. In other words, he's saying, hey, I don't care what I hear. I don't care what I see. I don't care what I experience. It. I trust God and his word above everything else. His heart is steadfast, trusting in the Lord. His heart is established. So when you establish your heart on the fact that God's contract is the most solid thing on the planet, that God's word is above everything else. It's above everything you experience, see, feel, hear, that if it doesn't align with the word of God, then you can place your trust in the word of God far and above anything else. When, when, you, when you settle that in your heart, this is how life starts shaping up. You're going to find that you have plenty. You're going to find that you're taken care of even in the midst of the fire. I want to give you a real quick example. And uh, she, she's not here. If she was here, I'd make her wave her hand at you. Uh, many of you know uh, Shnajana Reed. Uh, and, and she attends some. She's got two, two kids that are in GCV Youth. Uh, she's Russian. She's the, the uh, little blonde Russian lady who's been, who'll, who'll attend sometimes. Sweetheart of a lady. Uh, been in the neighborhood for nine, ten years uh, her and her husband, uh, Tyrone, were probably some of the first people I met when I moved into the neighborhood nine years ago. Uh, my daughter, Lily, her son, Mark, have been playing with each other, laughing with each other, fighting with each other <laughs> since, they were in, uh, since they were three years old. And they're, they're almost like little cousins. They've, they've just grown up and love each other to death. Um, uh, it was about three years ago in March that uh, Tyrone, her husband, a young couple, but he had uh, hip replacement surgery. And a, f a couple of weeks after the surgery, he's still recovering. He was working from home and a uh, blood clot uh, from the, from the uh, surgical point uh, got into his bloodstream, instant, instant dead. Uh, took place, she's the only, it was her and her kids at home. Uh, it was actually right at the top of COVID. So it was that first week that the world shut down, right? So, which is all of a sudden, you've got tragedy happening. You're about to go into months of isolation <laughs> because of COVID, right? Uh, she's Russian. All of her family is in, over in Russia. And here she is. She was, she was full-time homemaker. Uh, Tyrone handled all the business affairs. And uh, it's just her and the kids, you know. Uh, ambulance comes. This is how God prospered her in the midst of one of the most horrific things to ever happen in her life. That's why I'm saying you can be in the fire and you can still prosper. And it has nothing to do with what kind of car you drive, what kind of jewelry you got, any of that. It has nothing to do with she wasn't sending $1,000 to the biggest, fanciest preacher, you know, to get blessed. She was having to trust God. So what happens is they, you know, a neighbor who lived across the street from her, who was actually supposed to have already moved to Florida, but the move got delayed by a few days, who happened to also be a believer in Christ, <laughs> comes walking along and says, hey, there's an ambulance outside of the Reed's house. Let me see what's happening. So all of a sudden, instantly, God put a fellow sister, believing sister, right there with her. Not only that, Albert and Sharon Estes, who live right across the street, many of you know them, incredible godly couple, they ran out, said, you go to the hospital with the ambulance, we'll stay with your kids. So now there's two children of God looking over her children for her. Here she is with the other neighbor, goes to the hospital. They're working on them, working on them, you know, trying to get uh, any type of sign of life going. Uh, in the meantime, I'm 
all the way in Rockwall, on my way back from Rockwall from a, a meeting I had, uh, I get a phone call from someone in the neighborhood, hey, are you aware that Tyrone got rushed to the hospital in an ambulance? No, I'm not. So I immediately, I'm only a couple of miles away, I call, uh, get a hold of the neighbor, actually the neighbor answered her phone to tell me what was going on. Okay, I'm heading straight there. So here's, here's a lady who normally would have been alone, yet God instantly flooded her with people all around her. So within minutes, she has a pastor right there, just as the doctor comes in and says, Mrs. Reed, we're sorry, there's nothing we can do. And the Lord allowed me to get there just in time where she would have a shepherd to be there with her. Uh, when she had to go in to see him, it was one of the hardest things I've ever done because he was a good friend of mine too. I have to go in there with her, but she had me there to help. The, uh, uh, she had her neighbor there to help. Uh, when, she, when we had to go tell uh, her children, here we were a cluster of godly people who could sh cover them in prayer. At that point, uh, 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 we, we, we wound up managing, she wound up having so much delivered to her house between food and supplies, she had to sit there and say, hey, thank you guys, I can't, I don't have enough room. <laughs> you know, everything's gonna go bad, you know. Uh, in other words, God supplied her need in abundance. Uh, I had been, uh, Erica will remember this, uh, uh, she, she and I were talking, and I told her, I said, for about three months, God has been telling me to pray for $10,000, which is really weird because, you know, God normally doesn't have me pray for money. But so I was praying and believing and speaking, Lord, I know you're going to supply $10,000. I don't know what for, I don't know where, but $10,000 for four months, three, four months, I, I spoke $10,000. Uh, I, I had, the, we had begun raising support, some, some finances for Shnijana. We just wanted to have, you know, maybe a few thousand dollars just to help cash on hand during all the mayhem, right? Uh, and in two days, I checked the website, $10,000. And the Lord said, I had you praying provision for her long before she even knew what was about to hit her. God had provision. He was already setting the pieces in place to take care of her. Uh, at that point, everything was taken care of for her. Now, does she have to walk through the fire? Yes. Did she have to go through grief and mourning? Yes. Still is. And, and who wouldn't, right? Uh, this is the love of her life. She's a young lady. And yet God provided so much for her. Uh, not only that, Tyrone's cousin is a pastor's wife, married to a pastor. They stepped in. So now she has two pastors checking in on her for months, making sure she's okay, any needs. The school stepped out. Everything that she needed for that horrible situation was provided and taken care of. That's prosperity. That's what I'm talking about. When you can trust God and do what he says to do to the best of your ability, he will allow you to flourish and be successful. When you... When you uh, and, and that was the wonderful thing about Tyrone is he, he very much was a, was, was a man of God, a believer, a man of faith. And one month before he passed, one month before he passed, he told me, he said, Dave, God just told me to, to, to uh, cash out on some investments and pay my house off. Wow. I said, well, praise God. And so God set everything up for this woman to be cared for. Doesn't mean that his life is easy for. Doesn't mean that she hasn't gone through all the emotional gamut of why and being angry at times. And I mean, we're human. Of course we're going to go through. But she'll stop and say, but you know what? God has been so good to me. That's prosperity. It's not just about having a happy life and everything's okay and you got, you know, you got all this stuff. It's not about the stuff. It's like what Ryan's saying about if I could have anything, just give me you. Because if I have you, I got everything. But she established her heart on his covenant to the best of her understanding. And God, even in that, God honored his covenant, his contract with her. Because she established her heart on an established covenant. Amen? 
So let's talk about his word. Why do we need to establish it on his word? The book of Psalms says that God has placed his word above his name. That's pretty powerful. What's more powerful than the name of Jesus? The name of Jesus, demons flee. Folks are healed. You know, lives are changed. Peace is spoken. When you say Jesus, you've said it all, right? Right? And yet he's placed his word even above his name. Because what good is your name if your word's not good? You can have the most popular name on the planet, but if you're the biggest liar in the world, nobody cares about you, right? But he has established his word even above his name. Look, at this is Joshua about to go in and take the promised land. We, we talked about this the last several weeks. So God is about to make good on this contract and covenant that he made with Abraham almost 500 years before this where he told Abraham, your descendants are who's going to get this land. You're going to live and, and die a good old, ripe old age. But your descendants are going to come back out of, out of Egypt and take this land. So the contract is about to be fulfilled. And Joshua is the man to take him across. And look what God said. God could have given him anything. He could have given him military tactics. He could have told him, oh, and by the way, when you get over there, make sure you do X, Y, and Z. He could have, he could have, uh, told them what music to sing when they, you know, when they crossed over. But this is what he tells them to do, okay? Joshua chapter 1, uh, starting with verse 5. God says, no one will be able to stand against you as long as you live, for I will be with you as I was with Moses. I love this. Someone here this day, I will not fail you or abandon you. And then he says, and I highlighted this because he repeatedly says this, be strong and courageous. Be strong and full of courage. How can you do that? When you trust them, you can do that. So let's talk about having faith. For you are the one who will lead these people to possess all the land. I swore to your ancestors I would give them. So in other words, he, he's referring to his contract, to his covenant. I made a covenant, so be strong and courageous. Trust me, it's my covenant. It's my contract. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful. Here we go. So here we are. we we, we got to have faith in him. Be careful to obey all the instructions Moses gave you. So in other words, do the word of God. Have faith in me, have faith in my word, but do it. Obey it. Do not deviate from them, turning either to the right or to the left. Then you will be successful in everything you do. Then you're going to be prosperous. When are you going to be prosperous? When you're strong and courageous or you have faith in me. And you do what I tell you to do. That's what he's saying. It's there over and over and over. Then he goes on, study this book of instruction continually. Meditate on it day and night. He, again, he could have given him any other, any other advice. But this is what he, he, he went back to his word. Stay on my word, Joshua. Stay on my word. Study this book of instruction continually. Meditate on it day and night so you will be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then. Only when? When you've done what he told you to do, right? <laughs> Only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. Anyone in the mood to do that? To prosper and succeed in everything you do? Yes. So, it's about doing his word. And hey, let's face it. Uh, I'll mention money. I'll, I, I've been steering away from it, but I'll mention it real quick. How many in here like money? Sure. If you didn't raise your hand, you're lying. I didn't say you love money. The Bible says that the love of money is the root of all evil. But hey, we appreciate it, right? So. <laughs> I'm just saying, if, if I handed everybody $50 a day, y'all going to be smart. Woo, church was fun today, right? So look, let's just be real. Well, well that's included in all you do, right? We work. We got to make money. We got to pay bills. We got to put food on the table. You want to be successful and flourish in that and prosper in that? Do what God has, do what God says to do. That's why when we come back from VBS takeover the following week, we're actually going to talk about some, we're, we're going to talk about money. So, oh man, preachers talking about prosperity and money. Here we go. No, no, I, I'll, I'll put you all at ease and teaching it. I will not be asking you to give one dime to me or one dime more to this church than what God tells you to do. 
Because, because if I flourish financially, it has nothing to do with manipulating you guys. It has everything to do with me trusting God and doing what he tells me to do. And he is my source. Not how much you guys, you know, I can twist your arm to give or not give or whatever. Right? Plus, we don't practice witchcraft here at Gathering Church. And the Bible says manipulation is the same as witchcraft. So we're not going to be doing that. But I do want you guys to be educated on what the Bible has to say about money and what, what the Word of God promises to you about money because I want you all to be blessed. Man, I want you guys to be blessed and prosper. Verse 9, this is my command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. So right there, he placed his word even above his name. And he said, Joshua, when you get in, when you step into my promise, when you step into the kingdom I am giving you, if there's one thing you, you need to remember, that's to trust me and do what my word says to do. Man, that's it <laughs> right there. That is kingdom prosperity. So establish your heart on the word, on his, on his contract. And then finally, and I promise, can I read you three more, three more quick scriptures? Is that, y'all good? Yeah. Establish your word on his wisdom. Establish your word on his wisdom. The Bible says, above all else, get wisdom and understanding. You want to know, you want to know what the currency of the kingdom is? It's wisdom. Wisdom. Wisdom is far more valuable than anything you can find on this planet. It's far more valuable than the biggest check account on this planet. Because you can't buy wisdom, can you? But with wisdom, it can teach you how to make money. Wisdom can teach you how to love your neighbor, even the neighbor you want to strangle. Or is that just me? I'm sorry. Oh, I just confessed that. I'm sorry. I know you guys are much more spiritual than me. <laughs> it, it will teach you, wisdom will teach you how to treat your wife right so that your prayers are answered. The Bible says that. So you better treat your wife right so that your prayers aren't hindered. So if you're like, man, I've been praying for weeks. God's not listening to me. Well, how are you treating your wife? That's a good question to ask. Wisdom will teach you how to, how to build up and honor your husband. Wisdom will teach you how to pursue God like you never have before. Wisdom, man, that's the currency of the kingdom, right? So here, happy is the man who finds wisdom and the man who gains understanding. For her proceeds, for wisdom's proceeds are better than the profits of silver and her gain than fine gold. Right there saying it, look, man, it's better than any money you can have. She is more precious than rubies and all the things you may desire cannot compare with her. Length of days is in her right hand. Think about that. Within wisdom... Money can't buy you extra days, but wisdom says in her right hand is length of days, and then in her left hand, riches and honor. <laughs> Money, property, possessions, they can't do any of that. But boy, with wisdom, you can, you can lengthen your life <laughs> and have wealth, tangible wealth. That's pretty cool. That's, that's pretty valuable to me. Uh, Colossians chapter, uh, chapter one, starting with verse nine, for this reason, we also, since the day we heard about, this is Paul writing, uh, to, to this church, since the day we heard about it, do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with a ton of money or filled with a ton of whatever, right? No, it says filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him. In other words, that you may obey his word, do what pleases him, right? Because if you do that, then you'll be fruitful in every good work. There it is again. You'll be fruitful or prosperous in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Why do you want to increase in the knowledge of God? Because that's more eternal life that you get to experience right here. This is eternal life to know God and his son whom he sent. That's eternal life. So the more, that, the more that you know of him, the more life you experience. Finally, James chapter 1, verse 5. And we'll all stand for this one. 
I make you feel better. I get you standing. If any of you lacks wisdom, here's the key. Say, well, I need wisdom. Trust me, you need wisdom far more than you need a paycheck. But if you lack it, here's the cool thing. Let him ask of God who gives to all liberally without reproach. And it will be given to him. So God's got wisdom. All you got to do is ask for it. Verse 6, but let him, let him ask in faith with no doubting. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. So when you ask him, believe that he's going to give it to you. Trust him on it. It goes back to faith, right? So if I establish my heart on something, I'm, I, I try my best to speak it out. And so sometimes I got to get my head right. Does this make God do anything? No, it just aligns my brain with what God's saying in his word. So, so I encourage you, maybe use these uh, declarations this week. Today I establish my heart fully and fully trust God's established contract with me. I ask you, Lord, for divine wisdom today. I believe your word and your promise that you will liberally provide wisdom to me. I thank you, King Jesus, for long life, riches, and honor provided by the wisdom you granted me. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, I praise you. Thank you. Thank you for your established contract. And we establish our hearts on that, Lord. We set our hearts in a fixed position on your word that your word is above everything else. If it's in your word, we trust it, we believe it, we live on it, we depend on it. Teach us to be kingdom-minded. Teach us to be citizens of your kingdom, Lord. Thank you for the blessing. Thank you for your covenant. And thank you for your provision and your prosperity in our life. We love you and we adore you today. In Jesus' name, amen. Let me speak a blessing over you. Ryan's gonna lead us in a song. And uh, my wife will be up here to give you guys a few uh, 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 announcements after we sing. After we sing, you can be seated and rest your legs. But uh, let me speak a blessing over you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord shine his face upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's worship one more time as a family. And may I be like Mary And open to the movements of your heart Blessed in the keeping of your promise A faithful friend of God and May I love your presence More than any gift you've given me more than any crown I could receive, more than all my dreams. If I could have let it be your eyes.
let it be your eyes on me Cause every time I catch your gaze My world starts changing I don't have that much to bring Just a simple song to sing If I could have anything Let it be an offering Let me be an offering Let me be an offering I want to be, want to be an offering Thank you, Lord. That's the prayer of our hearts this morning. We give it all to you this morning. she is. I was looking over here for you. Thank you that way. Um, these are just a couple of quick announcements. I feel like um, your pastor already kind of gave them to you, so I'll just try to clean them up a little bit. Um, so he told you that this week coming up is uh, VBS, and so it'll be the 5th through the 9th from 9 a.m. to 11, or to noon, sorry, 9 a.m. to noon, and um, it's going to be here at the LECC. Today is going to be set up. So for those of us that signed up to volunteer as setup crew, um, go ahead, go home, get your lunch, change your clothes, get into something comfortable, and come back and be ready to work. Um, I think uh, Pastor Romo is going to be here until about 7 o'clock tonight. So uh, she just wants it to be open and come and go as you please or what time you have to give. Um, but that's tonight. And then uh, next Sunday will be the VBS um, she says blast off, but I rather think of it as the, the coming back down because we've already blasted off this week. So uh, anyway, that'll be next Sunday. And um, just one word of prosperity that I noticed is I think there were far more kids here than adults. So I thought that was pretty encouraging to see that um, for your area filled with young life. So, um, so I'll give that out to you. And other than that, um, the service is finished. Um, go in peace. And, uh, and we'll all go over and pick up our kids. <laughs>